In this problem, we have three arms, arm AB, arm BC, and CD. Arm AB and BC are free to move, and we're asked to find the angular velocity and angular acceleration of both of these arms. Meanwhile, arm CD is sliding along the bottom surface. We're given the velocity and acceleration of this arm. We're also given the dimensions and the angles, angle locations. So let's start with the diagram. So what we're given is that CD moves um, with a velocity of 3 meters per second to the right and an acceleration to the left. Now since CD is a rigid body, we can assume that D and C will have the same acceleration and velocities, and since it's sliding, there's no angular acceleration. So the velocities that are given, we can simply apply them, at velocities and acceleration, we can apply them at C. So this is going to be um, VC, and it's going to be equal to um, 3 meters per second. And then in red, we're going to do acceleration. Uh, so acceleration is actually to the left. And so I'm going to offset it, but this is again acting at C. And this is AC, and it's going to be equal to negative 1 meter per second squared. And I'm going to draw again our coordinate system. Our coordinate system is going to be centered at A, but I'm going to leave it out of A, so I'm going to draw it to the side. Um, so X is to the right, positive. Y up positive and rotation is positive counterclockwise, as we'll see later. Um, so essentially, we're given um, the velocity, so we can scrap this um, sliding bar and we can just assume that the system has two arms and uh, point C has the following velocity and acceleration. Um, so we could solve for um, use the formula. Um, v equals to omega cross r to solve for um, the um, velocity at point B, and then again omega at BC and AB. Um, but in this case, we're actually going to use the time derivative technique um, to solve um, for the angular acceleration velocities of AB and BC. So what we first have to do is we have to define uh, a distance. And this distance um, is all dependent on the problem, but it has to be a, a distance that we're going to call s um, that is characteristic of your system and starts from a point that has no velocity and goes to a point of known velocity and acceleration. So that when we take the derivative and the second derivative with respect to time of that distance, um, then we can directly plug in the linear velocity and acceleration that we're given. So in this problem, we're going to pick a distance between A and C. And this distance here will be um, called S. Okay, and so as you can see, this distance S starts from a point with zero velocity and acceleration and goes to a point of known velocity and acceleration. And this distance changes with time. Um, as our whole system moves, and that's important. So now we're going to write down this S in terms of the geometry of the problem, so in terms of the parameter L and theta. So as you can see, um, S is going to be equal to 0 0.5, which is our L, times cos theta, and this gives us uh, the distance, this distance here, um, so this is 0 0.5 cos theta, um, but there's two of these, right, because this is uh, symmetric, and so we're going to multiply it by 2. And so s we can simplify to cos theta. And this is going to be the distance between point A and point C at any time. Now we know that this changes with time, and we know that at this specific instant, this s is changing with respect to with the same value as vc. Again, because this point is fixed, so it's this s is not getting longer or shorter here. This is always going to be fixed here. But here, s is going to be expanding at 3 meters per second. And so we know that s dot, the time derivative of s at this in this frame, is going to be 3 meters per second. So if we take the time derivative um, of cos theta, which is s, that we can equate to 3 meters per second and get um, a value um, for omega. So as you can see, uh, when I take the derivative of s with respect to time, which is also denoted as s dot, I get the following, negative sine theta uh, times theta dot. And if you're wondering where this theta dot comes from, 
Um, again, theta depends on time, right? Because with time, this theta is going to increase or decrease. Um, so when we take the derivative of cos theta, we get negative sine theta, but then we also have to take the derivative for the with the product rule of the inside. Um, so that's where this theta dot comes from, from the product rule. So now we have um, this equation. We can also rewrite theta dot as omega because the rate of change of uh, the angle is um, the angular velocity. Uh, so we can rewrite this as sine theta times omega. And this omega, um, we're solving for the two different angular frequencies, right? But, but as you can see, this problem is highly symmetric. So this angle is equal to this angle, and this length is equal to this length. Therefore, the uh, magnitude of these two um, angular frequencies will be the same. And this is why we're solving for one omega. But it's important to note that their direction will be different, and we'll see how to get their direction in a little bit. Um, but let's just solve this equation. So we know that s dot is going to be equal to 3, so we're just going to plug everything in 3 to the right, so positive is equal to negative sine of 60 degrees times omega. And if we solve for omega, we get that omega is equal to negative 2 square root of 3 radians per second. And again, this is not the final answer. This is just a magnitude. Now we need to find the direction. So as you can see, um, the direction uh, depends on which way the angle or which way the rotation is occurring. So we defined a positive direction of rotation uh, counterclockwise. Um, so as you can see, angle theta of arm AB follows that convention. With an increased angle, we get rotation in the counterclockwise direction. Meanwhile, theta for uh, arm BC follows the opposite convention. So if we turn our, um, if we rotate our bar counterclockwise, we should have an increasing angle, but our angle actually decreases. So whichever value we get uh, with our convention, so whichever value we solve for uh, in omega, we actually have to reverse the direction. Okay, now let's find this direction. So we know that rotation is occurring in the xy plane. So the direction about which the rotation occurs is the z um, direction, which is out of the page. Uh, so in, in case of arm AB, um, the angle is going to be decreasing because we got a negative, right? So um, omega is negative. The rate of change of the angle is decreasing. Therefore, the rotation, um, this change is going to be in the clockwise direction. And if it's clockwise, we see that um, it's opposite to our sign convention. So it's going to be in the negative z direction, about the negative z direction. So negative k hat direction with our unit vector. Um, so omega AB is going to be equal to negative 2 root 3 uh, radians per second in the k hat direction. Meanwhile, for the other arm, we said it's just the opposite, and we can think about it. Um, so this arm is going to have a, um, is going to actually, so this arm is twisting toward inwards, and this arm is twisting inwards, but with the opposite direction. So this direction is going to be clockwise. Um, so since it's clockwise, it's going to have a positive rotation. Therefore, uh, omega BC is going to be positive to root 3 radians per second. And again, it's the same k hat direction because um, it's into, it's rotating about the z plane, which is out of, into or out of the screen or the page. All right, now let's move on to the uh, angular acceleration. So angular acceleration, we can find in a similar way. Um, I mean, we could also find it with the formula um, A is equal to alpha cross R, but there's also that radial component. But we can find it with this time derivative method, where we take the double derivative of S, or the der derivative with respect to time of S dot. And again, we have that value that is just one negative one meter per second squared. So let's go ahead and take that double derivative. So s double dot, I'm just going to be taking the derivative of this over here, is simply the derivative with respect to time of negative sine theta times theta dot. Um, so this is going to involve the product rule. Um, so there's going to be two terms that we get in the end. Um, and so when we use the product rule, we get negative cos theta, um, theta dot squared minus sine theta times theta double dot. And again, this theta double dot here um, comes from the derivative of theta dot, where this theta dot squared comes from the 
product rule of um, the sine theta times, again, this theta dot, so that's why we got a square. And then, again, we can do just like what we did before, plug in this value, which we have. We can also plug in theta, which we have, and theta dot we just found over here. Um, so we can simply plug that in. Um, and um, we can solve for theta double dot, which is also alpha, our angular acceleration. Uh, so let's solve for that. Negative 1, because it's in the negative direction, is equal to negative cos of uh, 60 degrees times 2 root 3 squared. And notice that it doesn't matter what sign we put in here because it's going to be squared. So whichever sign you put, you're going to end up canceling it out. So we don't have to worry about that. Minus sine of 60 degrees times alpha, which I just replaced for theta double dot. We can solve for alpha, just like we did with omega. We get that alpha is equal to uh, 10 square root of 3 over 3. And we got a negative. But again, and this is radians per second squared. But again, this is doesn't have a direction. This is just a magnitude. We need to figure out the direction. So let's go back to our diagram before. Um, since um, we can reason it with this direction here, AC is to the left. Okay. Um, so the rate of change of velocity is going to be to the left, meaning that these two brackets um, are going to react in the opposite as it did for VC, uh, meaning that um, this bracket here will tend to move to in that direction and this will move in this direction, which is the opposite of what we had before. So the directions will actually be switched. So um, alpha BC will be in the negative direction and omega and alpha AB will be in the positive k hat direction. And so we can solve for it. We can simply write that down and box it in as our final answer. So alpha AB is in the positive 10 square root 3 over 3 radians per second squared k hat direction. Um, meanwhile, alpha BC is going to be in the negative 10 square root 3 over 3 radians per second squared k hat direction. And we can box that in as our final answer. And so this is how you find um, the angular velocity and angular acceleration with the time derivative method of a simple geometry.